This is the Tom Anderson Show, broadcasting live from the KVNT studios, 7 to 9 a.m., Monday through Friday. He is a titan in Alaska. Have you ever heard the word folks eponymous, which means something is named after someone? Really, Don Young is Alaska. The two most famous people in Alaska's history are Don Young and Ted Stevens. And we've got half of that that tag team with us today. Congressman Don Young, the Honorable Don Young, how are you, my friend? Thank you, Tom, and thanks for inviting me to be on the show. I love these type things. I'm doing well. I'm happy. I- I will say, though, I have lived in this state for 63 years. I've never seen the ice as bad as it is now. I Uh, slipped the other day. (laughs) It's horrible. I was just sanding and plowing yesterday. Okay, so right on top of the agenda while we talk about this, and you're right in the middle of this trying to defend Alaskan interests, route, uh, what, route Ambler Road, route 211 mile issue all of a sudden, in, in the headline news, Biden saying, I want to relook at all of this. We just had Rick Whitbeck on from Power of the Future, who I know you've interviewed with. Tell me about this, and, and why does the Biden administration continue to pick on us at every level? Well, you know, this is a sad thing. Uh, this administration has probably been the most harmful to any time during Alaskan history, including territories. Uh, the Ambler Road went through the full process, all the studies, all the pre- preamble, uh, the states promoted it, aid is promoting it, uh, and uh, now comes the Biden administration, and a guy named Hayes in the White House is a hangover from Obama. Uh, a lot of the, the decisions being made are the Obama extreme environmentalists that are wicked, working with the Biden, and they're just hammering us. There's been 25 executive orders done by this president that adversely affect the state of Alaska. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm, um, I don't know what you can do about it other than the fact we're praying we take control on 22. At least we won't fund these agencies. That'll help out. Uh, and then maybe in 24 we'll elect the president. It'll say the state of Alaska and Alaska natives have rights, and we're not going to take it away by federal action. Uh, but the Ambler Road is a bad one because we need those uh, those uh, minerals that are in there for the future generation, especially now with the unrest in Europe and, of course, uh, and uh, getting our resources from China. Uh, so it's a bad thing, and I, I'm uh, very frustrated. I talked to the secretary the other night not very nicely, uh, but she's not really making these calls. They're coming right out of the White House. I figured as much with his kitchen cabinet. You're currently the longest serving member of Congress, and I know you probably hear this in every interview, but it's a big deal. I mean, it really is. And you're the last remaining member that served under the Nixon administration. Uh, You're the dean of the House of Representatives, and that was, of course, after Mr. Conyers resigned. And, And I look at your history, and I can talk to folks like my father, retired trooper colonel, Tom Anderson Sr., who has met you many a time and, you know, supportive of you. And I guess I'll say an old timer, but but someone let's say we say a senior citizen is mid 70s and up middle age, let's say, is 40s to 60s, 70s. And then you've got youngsters below that. I hear across the board you have such a fan base because you're someone that listens you're someone that that can work with people and you can be cantankerous and tough i mean you're kind of the father figure no one wants a father figure to be a wimp so i mean you're definitely tough you got the hardest handshake of anyone i've ever met but you also have a caring heart and you've looked at i look at agriculture and other areas where you have kept an open mind and and to that end how does it feel working with all the newcomers that come in cycle after cycle after cycle in the House of Representatives federally, and and is, does that get frustrating, or do you just amalgamate to each new personality in other states that you have to collaborate with on committees? I don't get frustrated because these people are uh, rightfully elected by uh, the voters. I don't agree with their policies or philosophies, but I never hold you know that against them uh, that, that because they're they're. Voters voted them in, and I think the voters have the last say, and they can vote them out. Uh, I am a little concerned that uh, the mass media uh, gives a lot of attention to 
you know, I will say both sides of the aisle, AOC, you know, uh, um, I can name the rest of them, the squad. And our side, they do the same thing with Marjorie Greene, the rest of them. And I'm just saying, you know, those people don't do much as far as legislators go. AOC, for instance, uh, uh, has never had a bill heard in the committee that she sponsored. Uh, she's never had a bill moved out or voted on the House floor. And she's never helped any of her constituents. But she gets all the neurotity and, and <laughs> you can't believe what the press, how they follow her. And I'm saying that's not our role. Our role is to try to govern the balance of the needs of the constituents. And I've told people this. You know, I hear these people running for office by seat. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to. The real only true thing a person should do in elective office is to speak for those that vote for them. And that's the, my job. I get my ideas from the people of Alaska. Uh, I get you know, told what the problem is in a community or or uh, individually, and then we try to address it and fix it where the government isn't doing their job correctly, primarily. So I've been doing that. And uh, the, new, the new one's coming in. There's a, just a, well, we, we're going to have about, uh, I would say, 70 new members this coming election. Uh, it takes me about two years to get used to them all. Then I start all over again. Yeah, you got to keep that. That's the one. That's the bane for people to understand this. How many times uh, Congressman Young has had to run, and that's the system. He knew what he was getting into when he ran, but it's every two years. I wish it was every four or every six because it really it, it makes it not that he acts that way. Don Young is a genuine guy. He doesn't ever act political that I've seen. But 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 you almost are always on the campaign trail in the context. Maybe not you literally, but but mentally we're okay. You know, we're dealing with an election coming within another year. What's interesting is one of your opponents, Nick, I saw a photo of him with like a shotgun or a rifle. And I'm thinking, okay, uh, do you really want to go at Don Young at that level where you're Mr. Hunter? I don't care if it's Murkowski, Lisa, Frank, Ted Stevens, Dan Sullivan. None of them are as outdoorsy and hunter, fisherman, recreator in the wild. I mean, you, you born, lived it from Fort Yukon all these decades. And, and I, it would be just interesting if your opponent, not to go down the campaign track on this interview, but if he decides to try to challenge you as he's the hunting candidate it just that i thought that was funny but i uh in your case you you definitely walk the walk when it comes to uh outdoors life and such interior versus urban you've been one that has you've been able to close that that gap and i think you're respected in both has that taken work to do that because i mean you're a rural guy that had to you know acquiesce or at least come to urban centers and deal with city folk has that ever been a struggle or have you ever been able, you've been able to balance that no problem? When I started, it was a real struggle because I was for UConn, and we used to have the old 19th district, and they elected seven House members to Juno from that area. They all came from Fairbanks. I was the only one running from outside that area, and I ran on balanced representation. That's way back in, the, in 1962, and um, I, uh, excuse, uh, excuse me, 1964, and I lost. Uh, because primarily, well, who's he? And But I ran in 66, and I won. In 68, I was number one vote-getter of the seven, and in 70, I ran for the uh, the uh, Austin State Senate. Uh, it's hard, uh, but that's what I think makes me a good congressman. I have trapped professionally for 11 years. Uh, made my, I caught a lot of fish and run dogs. Uh, I mean, those type of things, you don't bring to Congress. And, and the importance of that, I understand the urban area. And I try to understand, and I think I do, pretty much the challenges in the rural areas. We've come a long ways in the rural areas, but it's still a lot different than Anchorage versus Port Yukon. So it's, it's part of the fun part of the job. Yeah, absolutely. Another question, when we look at Ukraine and Russia, and, and we're, we're going to run to a break here, we'll have a short, short break, and then we'll come back and we have a, a shorter segment. So if you can stick with us just a few more minutes, but you, you can contemplate this as we go to break. And maybe we can touch on it for a few seconds here. The Ukraine-Russia debacle, are, are you, uh, I guess, complimentary or supportive of, of the sanctions you're seeing, or could we do more from the Biden administration? Or is it too early to assess? Well, I think it's a little early, and, and we talk about sanctions. I very frankly think we're 
we're, we're running down the slippery slope right now and be very careful of that. Uh, I look at the militarily, the Russia is right next door to Ukraine. Uh, and we're, you know, we're 10,000 miles away or longer. Uh, and I'm just saying, be careful of that type of conflict. Yeah, uh, it's I, true. It's, it, it, we have to be very, you know, this is not new. No, uh, it isn't now. new. That, that's a very good point, by the way, by Congressman Don Young. You, do you think this is a new event? It's been happening for years. Putin's been eyeing Ukraine and trying to creep factor into Ukraine for years. We're going to come right back. Short break. A few more questions for Congressman Don Young, Alaska's congressman. Stay with us right here on The Tom Anderson Show. This is the Tom Anderson Show, broadcasting live from the KVNT studios, 7 to 9 a.m., Monday through Friday. Hey, we're back. We're talking with Congressman Don Young. Remember, our show, the Tom Anderson Show, this is our 11th year. We're on from 7 to 9 a.m., live and local, Monday through Friday, from Matsu to Anchorage. And then, of course, online at TomAndersonShow.com. You can listen in D.C. or any place on earth if you were interested in this. So Congressman Don Young is with us, and yes, everybody knows his name. And he has a very high positivity rating. But when you get into a campaign where we're sliding into the next campaign cycle, and that's in August and in November, a primary and a general election, what do the voters say? If oddly someone didn't know Don Young, they might say, okay, you're running. You want to be reelected. What have you done for us? And Don Young is no politician. He's a statesperson. Don, what would you say if someone said, what have you done for Alaska? And do you get along? with your federal uh, delegation members? Oh, I get along well. I've always worked with everybody who's elected. Remember I said anybody who's elected, I respect that because the voters voted for them. We may not agree. Maybe take votes that I would not have taken, but we work together. we got a good team back east, and uh, we're working for Alaska all the time. I, I would say that if I, anybody asks what I've done for you, there's nothing I haven't touched in the last 49 years. By the way, Tom, this is the March 7th will be 49 years serving the people of the state of Alaska in the 49th state. I think that's sort of neat. 49, wow. 49. I sure and, do. Uh, that's great. But, uh, you know, I work with the people across the aisle, and, and I hold on to what people wish, wish me to do. Uh, I have had people say, well, what have you done? Well, the pipeline. That was my bill if you go back to history. The 200-mile limit was named the Stevens Magnuson Act. That was originated in the House. The 91 Claims Act, that was originated in the House. The gas line uh, guarantee, people don't remember that, was originated in the House. Most of the roads in the Matsu Valley, they were, came under the funding I put in my transportation bill when I was chairman of transportation. There's not much. It hasn't been, you know, every person in Alaska that had newly arrived, every nickel you got originated with some action that Ted Stevens and I were able to do in the Congress. And, I, and I'm proud of that fact. And everybody said, what have you done for me lately? Well, I got the cruise lines going again. That was, that was a big one. Uh, that, that's what to me, was very helpful. Uh, I've, done, I've got three bills signed by President Biden. No other Congress has had that done. So, you know, I, I'm proud of that work. But it always comes from the constituent, the voter. That's the one that gives me the inspiration and the desire to solve the problem. And that's why you're representing the people. No. Now, here's something. This is going to be, I'll delicately say this for the public, because you, we, we have a talk show, as you know, you're on it right now. And guess what? All sorts of people are listening across the board, different ages, genders, different everything, lifestyles, different parties. And so... I know this. I know who I support. I'm a lifelong Republican. I'm a Founders Club member, very active in the GOP right now. In fact, our ad agency, Optima, works with the Republican Party in Alaska and Ann Brown and team. And this is who I support. 
and then I'll get into my, my question to you. I support absolutely unequivocally Don Young for Congress. I support Mike Dunleavy for governor. And I support my dear friend Lisa Murkowski for U.S. Senate. Others, others listening might say, well, I love Charlie Pierce from the Kenai Peninsula for governor. And I love Kelly Shabaka. And I love Don Young. So often you're in the mix of that. You don't have a problem with that, do you? Because you will work and take the votes of anybody. And that sounds like a stupid question. You're going to say, well, of course, I'll take the votes from anyone. But what I mean is, have you gone through a gauntlet of like, okay, Don, I'm going to support you, but you better be for Kelly. Or I'm going to support you, but you better be for someone other than Dunleavy. Or you better support Mike Dunleavy. Have you had anybody, not that you can be strong armed, but have you had anybody talk about that? uh, You know, I'm going to vote in concert or do, do you not even get into that with the public when they talk to you about campaigning no actually tom that does happen uh, but my goal has always been i respect the voter i go back to that and i work well with anybody's elected again it goes back to the voter sure so i just respectfully that those say well i'm not going to vote for you if you support this or that and don't go that route you know this, this job is about the state of alaska and the person that doesn't think i'm doing the job for the state then fine don't vote for me yeah. But right now, I've done the job, I'm doing the job, and I like doing the job, and I'm going to continue to do the job. Now, I want to get reelected for the state. I want to get reelected for the state in, in, in August and uh, November. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm being very frank about this. If the people in Alaska decide that Don Young can't do the job anymore, well, then get rid of me. But I'm saying I do the job better than anybody else. and can continue to do that. That's why you should vote for Don Young. But again, that's the, the, the voter's choice, and they'll, we'll make it up. And everybody else is run. I respect anybody who runs for office. You know, it's, it's, it's a quite a deal. You think of it. It's not for the applause. I've never been about that. You have to have public service bent in your blood. And I was a school teacher for 11 years, and I loved it because it's again serving the public. It's public service. So anyway, that's where I'm coming from, and I'm going to continue to do that. I've got a great team. I've, most of all, I've got a great wife that backs me up. That's always very important. You know, I get, I get beanies for saying that, but That's it's true. That's right. I bet you do. Well, last question. We have Congressman Don Young. It's always an honor to, to have our federal delegate members, and I haven't interviewed you, if ever. It's been a long time. I was thinking, I don't recall if you've been on the show with me, but you've been on the show. So my last question is, when someone says, hey, Anwar, or or some of these other projects we just can't get through or you know way back when there was an issue on and i know you're a big veterans and disabled veteran supporter but you know there's been talk they look at it at a bird's eye national level view and they say we can't get anwar down we we need a change if i get elected if i beat don young i can get anwar through that's not true is it if anybody ran against you or or sullivan or murkowski it's not that simple is it because we've had a republican presidency and republican congress there's a lot of roadblocks to that isn't there of course you know and i passed anwar 14 times out of the house and uh 14 times now think about that that's that's about a long time sure i passed it get it passed out bipartisanly good support over the senate side and the senate has crazy rules and finally ted stevens was able to get it out and sent to president clinton one time and he vetoed it uh, and we didn't have the votes to override the veto. Now, we just finished this up with President Trump. We got that passed under the tax bill. Planet got it open. And now the Biden administration is trying to undo that. Anybody who says, I can get Anwar open, is, is very frankly, it's legal, but it's smoking pot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, I mean, it's true. It, it takes a lot more than one person. Yeah, you can't. You, there's no magic wand. And by the way, which reminds me, I have to go back to one thing about Putin. Uh, he's eating the elephant one bite at a time. His goal is to take over the provinces of the Ukraine one bite at a time. And his goal is to try to unify the old Soviet Union under Stalin. That's his goal. That's his history. And uh, that's something we have to be aware of because that will affect the European makeup, NATO, etc. But as far as, uh, you know, we're going to we're going to stop all this stuff. I just think you have to really look at the military aspect of it. 
Yeah, and, uh, yesterday, I, President, former President Trump said, if I was president, this wouldn't be happening. And I think he's short-sighted. I think it would be. You're right. The 15 nations, the biggest is Ukraine under the USSR. Putin wants all of those back. And Do- Donald Trump couldn't stop it any more than Biden could. But but we'll have to deal with it, as you say, because it's not something new, but it's in our face now. Congressman Don Young, it's been a pleasure. I look forward to getting your back maybe in the spring. Good luck on the campaign trail. You definitely have my support, my family's support support and and we look forward to hearing from you again as the stages of the campaign unfold like they have for you for decades so you're you're definitely a soldier on that front all right thank you tom and thanks for having me on the show and the listeners you know we can disagree but let's be agreeable as we disagree absolutely Well said. God bless you. Thank you, Congressman Don Young, joining us. And you can follow him online and Facebook and YouTube. He has all the the platforms and the sources. And he's our beloved Don Young. And I don't know anybody that doesn't respect him or say thank you for your service because he's he's just such a such a, a stalwart for Alaska. And you heard what he said. He said, hey, it's all about the voter and it's all about helping Alaskans, young and old. And I mean, boy, that's the truth. And you know, other candidates say that and other incumbents say that, but I don't say it. I don't think they say it with the heart and the, and the true um, the credentials that Don Young says it because he has been there. And the fact that he was a teacher in rural Alaska, how'd you like to work in winter in Fort Yukon? Uh, you know, when it's about 30, 40 below. And by the way, Don Young is Caucasian white. So he was reminds me of my dad in Barrow, Alaska in the 60s, where you're dealing with culture, you're dealing with ethnicity, all the different things. And he has uh, done quite a good job on that. Hence his elections. Look at how long he's been in. He's been in public service since the 60s in the Alaska legislature. So my friends, thank you for listening. You can watch this YouTube video. Look at the description below to follow Don Young and support him if so willing. And enjoy your day. God bless.